Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Framerate is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website, blog, or online portfolio. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use offer code FRAMERATE11. And by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music, and sound effects, After Effects templates, or 3D models, check out Pond5.com. And for an exclusive 15% off this month, use code FRAMERATE11. The viral video. Millions of views, millions in sales. What's their secret? What made them go viral? We did. Introducing Viral, the tool that guarantees you'll go viral. It's simple. Now you can pay for the clicks you need to make your video go viral. We have a vast network of professionals working day and night, constantly clicking on your videos. It began with our intern clicking program. But once we developed the IP propagator, we quickly expanded. Now we outsource to clickers all over the world. We've already expanded into South America, Indonesia, and India. But traditional clicking can only produce so many views. That's where we differentiate ourselves from the rest, providing outreach programs for the elderly. Keep clicking. In- Episode 100. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Brian Brushwood, and that's a century. century. That's a, that's. If those were shots, we'd be drunk by now. Yes, drunk and by hour. we are. Hey, thanks to Tony Rangel for making us the special 100th episode version of the intro. Yeah, man, I think it turned out really well. And of course, we we should thank everybody who contributes all of our little bumpers to bring uh, stuff in. People who suggest the viral videos for the openings and everybody who continues to tune, tune in. Uh, you and I, when we started this thing a hundred episodes ago, we didn't know what it was going to become. We just wanted to talk about TV and movies. And then slowly we started to discover this bizarre mission, this vendetta that we're on, this jihad against the world. Yeah, you know what? Frame rate has evolved to me very similarly to the way Buzz Out Loud evolved, which is we started with an idea and we're pretty close to that same idea, but we have molded it based on what people responded to and what fans responded to uh, over the years. And, 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 and it just keeps getting bigger and better. So by all means, we should thank you. We're not going to, but we should thank you for all you've done to help make frame rate what it is. a thank you coupon. Sort of like you can make, you sketch out a little back rub coupon that you give your mom. This is, we're going to give you a, ask us sometime and we'll thank you. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Your coupon <laughs> is not valid in Minnesota. Uh, joining us for our 100th episode, very excited to have Len Peralta of Jawbone Radio, Monsters by Mail, uh, Books, Television shows, interplanetary <laughs> yeah. exploration. I don't know, but but definitely the first two. Uh, Len, how's it going? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, guys. I'm a, I'm a big fan of frame rate, and I'm glad to be here. Now, Len, you are an artist, and a very good one, I might add. Uh, but are you also a cord cutter of any type? Do you do you, oh, do, you do any of the well, online? I was last week. I was last week because we lost power during Sandy. Ah, so uh-huh. I was- to be a cord cutter. You cut um, all the cords. But do you watch Netflix, Hulu? Do you do you, do you watch videos that way? Uh, somebody cut his cord, apparently. Yeah, no, that's good. It's a, That's the man shutting him down. <laughs> it's like, like oh, you know? Well, talk. you're off the show. Get out of here. Comcast is over there being like, cut the feed, cut the feed. <laughs> Try to kill our holy cow. <laughs> no, one of the reasons uh, we've got Len on today, uh, he's, he's going to, he does this thing. He's done it at Woodstock before where he does art live while a presentation or an event or a concert is going on. So he, he suggested that uh, while we're doing the show, and he's going to comment on, on the, the, the topics that we have as well, he's going to do some, some drawing. And it's kind of crazy. He's already done a couple of sketches of us, and he's, he's fast and good. Uh, so if we ever connect with him again on Skype, 
Uh, it'll be I'll fun. You, it's there, the man I'll be working shut on down. that. Like, we can't be having this. I'll tell you what, we should just jump on in and listen to uh, figure out the big story. This just in. No, no, no. This, I'm sorry. The big story graphic just does not do this justice. This is the biggest story of the year so far. Uh, Brian, do you remember where you were when you heard that Disney was buying Lucasfilm? Uh, yes, I, I found out by accident because I called Justin Robert Young to talk about uh, what we were going to do on an SFW. And I thought that Justin Robert Young was just just waxing poetic, philosophical, saying, hey, a new Star Wars movie versus Avengers 2. Which one's going to make more money? And we went back and forth. I was like, oh, I don't know. Avengers 2 is, a, you know, blew away. And, and, then, and then we hung up. And it wasn't until like two hours later that I go to the gig. And then I read the article. And I'm like, holy crap, this is actually happening. It's like a dream come true for me. Yeah. You know who wins in that battle? Disney, because they're putting both of those movies out. Star Wars Episode Seven is promised Disney, you said it in your press release that we will have that movie in the year 2015. If you didn't hear somehow, the basics are uh, George Lucas, who was 100 percent owner of Lucasfilm, has sold the entire operation to Disney. Uh, Disney will put Kathleen Kennedy in charge of the operation under the Disney uh, banner. It will remain where it is for now. The parts that are in L.A., the parts that are in Marin County, for the time being, are sticking right where they are. Uh, and D Disney has said they intend to expand the franchise with TV shows, with cartoons, and specifically with Episode 7 coming out in 2015 and Episodes 8 and 9 to follow a few years after each time. And they didn't even act like that was going to be the end. They said, we plan to release a movie every two to three years from now on, which I, I assume is is will be good. Because here's the thing. when uh, I was one of the loudest vocal critics, both when Pixar got bought by Disney and when Marvel, especially when Marvel got bought by Disney. Pixar, of course, continues to knock out the hits. Uh, maybe maybe not quite as, as blockbuster as they were, but we got The Incredibles. After that happened, that's all that mattered to me. Uh, and then we, uh, w w on the Marvel side, we got, you know, everything. We got the entire, the way you think of Marvel movies now. And the Avengers, always made possible by the Disney machine. And if they can do that to the Star Wars universe, I mean, as you know, I, I washed my hands of Star Wars. I couldn't believe it. When that last thing came out with, a, you know, the comedy shorts doing nothing but telling the same 20-year-old jokes. When, when you washed your hands of Star Wars, did, did you use a little R2-D2 soap dispenser? I uh, I was about to, and then it burned me when I touched it. I was like, ah. <laughs> he did a little shock thing like he does to the Ewoks. Yeah, that's right. And I wept the entire time. I'm like, I used to love you so much. But uh, George Lucas, first of all, has to be commended because he plans to give a crap ton of this money to charity. I and, think uh, almost all of it, right? Yeah, no matter. Is, well, I, I know some of it is in stock, so I don't see how he would be able to give He sells that. the stock. Give stock. Yeah, you can give stock to charity. Yeah, but uh, so a lot of it going to charity. That's fantastic, uh, and he's going to remain on as a creative consultant, which it's like I'm okay with that too because I, I didn't mind. I, I it, it didn't break my heart that Luke Lucas had an overall arching vision. What I hated was that nobody questioned his talents as a director, and we got some horribly written, horribly paced movies that really wait, broke. Wait, when you say no one questioned his talents as a, as a director, do you, do you what do you what do you mean by that? Oh, what I mean by, oh, dude, go go watch the Red Letter Media review of The Phantom Menace. And, like, he starts talking about how that when you when you start seeing the featurettes, the behind the magic of, of how they made it, it's like he comes out and he's like, there's the script. And, uh, you know, and everyone's like, nobody, nobody points. We're like, but this is bad. You need to rewrite this because he's king. He was bringing back Star Wars. And we're like, yes, whatever. But then all of his directing was in green screen and felt plasticky. And they, look, I don't want to I don't want to focus on the past. I want to focus on the future. I want to sit and speculate about who's going to direct. Uh, when we got like it wouldn't be Joss Whedon. He's going to be busy no, with he's Because Avengers uh, 2 is coming out in 2015. So he's taken. Also, J.J. Abrams committed to Star Trek projects through 2015. Uh, he's taken. Nolan? People are saying Chris Nolan, but yeah, that doesn't feel right. I, I don't, mm, I don't believe it. Well, Luke, Luke could talk like this. <laughs> yes, it's super. Dark. Oh, that's another question. Now, uh, if you read, did you read the Timothy Zahn books, the Thrawn trilogy? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, so uh, the first thing that popped into my mind was, holy cow, what if they did that? What if they 
recast similar to Star Trek. You had different actors playing slightly older versions of Hans, Luke, and Leia. Uh, that would be amazing. Well, and that's the rumor, right? Because and, and now here's the thing. Previously, Lucas had said, and, and believe me, Lucas is worse than Steve Jobs about saying one thing and doing another, so don't take this you know, too much to heart. But Lucas has said, no, the Zahn books are actually meant to bridge the gap between the, the middle three trilogy and a, and a possible... Uh, trilogy to come after someday. Of course, he also said, I'll never make a trilogy after that. Of course, he isn't. Disney's going to make it, so maybe he's telling the truth there. Uh, but then on the other side of that coin, there are rumors, and I don't know how true they are, that uh, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher have been taking meetings uh, about reprising their roles. Well, even as far back as the 90s, there was articles about how Luke Skywalker, or Luke Skywalker, uh, Mark Hamill had signed a, uh, what is it, a, a pay or play agreement, which just basically said some point in the next 20 years, we might want to do just something with you. Like the, the speculation was that there would be some kind of like a totally animated Luke Skywalker solo adventure that could come out, you know, 20 years later or whatever. And obviously that that didn't happen. But, you know, they had structural agreements in to get everybody in. And I'm sure everyone would love to participate. Um, unfortunately, I feel like I feel like it's all going to be Luke's children having their own adventure and there'll be these weird moments. They, they won't be weird. It, it'll be handled well, but you'll see brief moments where you'll see uh, uh, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher and, and uh, all of the old cast in minor roles. But I, I couldn't be more excited. I, I would say that it's not what I would have picked necessarily. If I wanted to say, this is where the star Wars should be given Obviously, George Lucas is thinking about, you know, after he's gone, where, you know, who should steward it. And I think that's good. Uh, on the other hand, it's not a bad pick. As you mentioned, Marvel, Pixar and Muppets as well have all been taken over by Disney. So they and they have done a fairly decent job with them. On the other side of that coin, it's Disney, which means, you know, the most militant, litigious uh, copyright protection organization in the world just got a little bit stronger. So do you think that well, we're going to see... More and cause... more governorships have, like, come under their iron control. Well, we've seen... Uh, we've even talked about on this show, you had that totally open-sourced version of, of Star Wars where they did it from beginning to end, all fan-contributed, and we were remarking on how Lucasfilm tends to be good about letting people, you know, go crazy with the the content as long as they're creating their own stuff and even parodies and uh, and mashups. Uh, do you think we're going to see the end of that with Disney? It, it's hard to say. I, I have no idea. I have no I have no basis for a uh, comparison. I, I don't know any that Disney has done anything else but try to crush anything uh, that that even comes close to having mouse ears in it. Um and so I, I, I don't know what they'll do with Lucas. And remember, Lucasfilm, very litigious when it comes to merchandising. Anybody makes uh, toys or anything in the Star Wars universe, they do go after them. They're tolerant of the fan films and the fan fiction and that sort of thing because they, George sees that as like just extending the brand of being part of the community. Uh, but they don't want to lose they don't lose the toy money. So, there's, you know, they, they're sort of like minded with Disney in that way. Uh, we've got Len back, it looks like. Uh, and Len, we're almost to the end of our conversation here. We're almost about, to the end of the show about, <laughs> about Star Wars. But what? By the way, let me just say, Time Warner Cable. <laughs> that's all I have to say. That's, that's, that's all, all you need to say. say. Yeah. <laughs> where Where were you when you heard that uh, Disney was buying Star Wars? Uh, I was actually, ironically, um, checking my tweets on a really jam 3G network, uh, and with no power. So I was trying to get like storm updates and stuff, and I'm like, "Oh wow, Disney Disney bought Mar um, bought uh, bought Star Wars," and um, I, I was like, "Wow, that's that's actually really huge news." Did you guys talk about the fact that there were originally was supposed to be nine movies, yep. Star Wars movies? Yeah, we, so you guys well, remember? You guys remember that? Though. Oh yeah, yeah. No, and I, I'm not even sure how true that is. I know Lucas has said it. I'm I, I'm not disputing that. But I, I, I don't know that Lucas really did have nine movies. I think he made that up one time on the spot, and it turned into <laughs> lore, and he just ran with it. He's like, yeah, sure, okay, yeah, sure, nine movies, why not? I got enough material I, for that. Well, I am, I am actually very excited about uh, Disney being acquired, I mean, Disney acquiring uh, uh, Lucasfilm. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be very good, and I think um, it's going to re-energize um, the Star Wars franchise, uh, at least the movies, at least. 
All right. So actually, on this subject, there was a really good article uh, on Wired talking about why Buzz Lightyear was worth billions more dollars than Han Solo. Because uh, the, the Marvel acquisition was roughly the same as what we're getting with Star Wars. But uh, previously, Pixar sold for, what was it, $7.5 billion? Are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Okay. Oh, I, uh, I didn't know. I thought that was a rhetorical question. Uh, oh no, that was me asking <laughs> you. That was I was hoping I was hoping you had read it and was because I didn't want to quote the wrong <laughs> the wrong number. But uh, but it makes the case for you know first of all, uh, Pixar was bought while it was just demolishing hit after hit after hit, and it has multiple franchises now. While they bought all of Lucasfilm and they do get the Indiana Jones franchise and I guess some other lesser ones, essentially Star Wars was their big their big asset and most of the revenue for star wars was coming in from licensing other things which is very similar to uh, the position that marvel was in and was suggested by wired magazine that's why they went for a comparable amount of money yeah pixar is a franchise generator star wars is a franchise custodian lucasfilm is a is a franchise custodian hey there's len len's drawing wait a minute those aren't mouse ears are they Oh they my God! Are. We're gonna get a takedown notice. Stop! Stop! Help! Help! <laughs> oh, we better. Then I better switch. Here, there. This is better. Ah, oh, wow! Hey, that's amazing. Go. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> that was fast. That was instantaneous. <laughs> <laughs> the audio listeners are gonna love all this. All right, is there anything else we want to say about this? No, let's move on to another big story. Stop everything! It's another big story. We almost did have to stop anything. This is everything. This broke right before Tech News Today this morning. Uh, CBS and Hulu striking a deal. Don't get too excited. Uh, it is a big thing because CBS was sort of the last holdout of the big four on Hulu. Even CW had stuff on Hulu. And CW is a CBS corporation company. But CBS itself did not. Uh, they will now be bringing their library content to Hulu+. Plus. These are the kinds of things that you could get at CBS.com. You can get them on CNET. You can get them on TV.com. You can get them on, uh, on Netflix in, in a lot of cases. Now they are actually coming to Hulu Plus subscribers. So I love Lucy, Twilight Zone, Star Trek, all the stuff in the library. More, more recent library stuff like num Numbers is in there as well. But it's not going to be current episodes that are airing on CBS television. Uh, it, the only exception, I, I read that Entertainment Tonight will be putting clips uh, of their, their daily shows up on Hulu as well. See, that's the problem is you hear 2,600 episodes, and it didn't say like 2,600 titles or, or series or show, but, but just 2,600 episodes. And if one of those, just one of those programs is Entertainment Tonight, that could be 1,000 episodes of that if they're counting it. I don't know how much what a math they're putting into this. Uh, this is certainly good news for Hulu, and it uh, certainly gives a boost but meanwhile, uh, Bonnie was thrilled with her Hulu Plus uh, experience, watching it on the iPad all the time. But uh, recently, she just won too many times, tried to watch something on the iPad, and it says, uh, go watch this on a computer instead. And so she canceled it and is out. So, Oh, so that thing that you mocked me about getting upset about uh, is now upsetting your wife? No, 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 no. Well, okay, yes, uh, it is. No, 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 you were upset about the idea of paying extra just for the privilege of watching on the iPad but Bonnie was annoyed because she paid for the privilege and then still couldn't watch it on the iPad. No, my, I was upset about the fact that I pay for something and not Tom, only do I, I also get ads, but I also can't watch the things that I can watch for free. That was all part Tom, of it. I think uh, I think I know what you were upset about better than you do. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, le yeah, uh, Len, do you, uh, do, you, do you care about Hulu all that much? Uh, I, I don't. I, I, I'm... I'm on the fence about actually trying to use Hulu or if it's just, you know, I, I'm kind of inundated with all these different choices and I'm like, well, I could watch Netflix on the Xbox or I can watch Hulu here. And I'm like, do I really need to do this? Like maybe I should be doing something else besides, you know, and then Hulu just seems to me like a, another, just another thing to keep track of. And I, I, and it's just, you know, talk about, cord cutting and everything it's just i i i don't need i personally i i don't find it um something that i really need to be doing so i i'd rather like i'm not going to be watching like the saturday night live reruns and all those other shows the you're office, not going to be going like back that. and watching old episodes of numbers uh pr probably not i mean i i even i mean 
my my Netflix account is just right down to just streaming. I don't even, you know, I'm I'm getting stuff on Apple TV, which is which is sort of frustrating, and I don't know who to blame if it's if it's if it's Time Warner Cable or if it's Apple TV. Things are going slow. I, you know, it's just it's I'm trying to simplify things, uh, or I, I just want things to work instantaneously, and, and I yeah. think trying to get into Hulu. Uh, and uh, and trying to see if I can get that to work is uh, is is just to me is just daunting. It's just I, I don't want to get into it, you know. All right, let's move on to yet another big story. Tuck in your bootstraps. It's yet another big story. So there's the rumor that Microsoft might be interested in buying Netflix. Then Carl Icahn. Uh, famed hostile takeover proxy fight stock guy uh, wades in and buys close to 10% of Netflix. Stock market goes crazy because they figure the only reason a guy like Carl Icahn comes and does this is A, he either wants to mess with Reed Hastings or B, he knows something and Microsoft is going to buy this stuff. Uh, so everyone jumps to conclusion B, although it may be both. There's lots of articles there uh, about how Netflix is reacting to this saying, sure, we'll take Carl Icahn's advice. Hurry up and write up a poison pill provision so he can't take us over with a proxy fight. Do it right away. <laughs> No, that's not that's not even a joke. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's totally a, a poison pill preparation already in effect. Uh, now there was I forget which of these articles was mentioning that uh, that Microsoft was snooping around, possibly looking at uh, investing in or even buying out Netflix, which I think would have been an interesting. That was the very first thing I said. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was busy. Uh, <laughs> I was busy dealing with other stuff. At you the just time. Tom merited me. I did. <laughs> have you done that before, Tom? Uh, I, I did it like two days ago on Tech News Today. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, that's where the that's where that that's how I set up the whole the whole story is that you had the rumors <laughs> about Microsoft possibly buying Netflix, and then when Carl Icahn came in and bought his big stake, everyone said, "Hey, that must be true." Did you hear about the the Microsoft thing <laughs> and Netflix possibly together? I guess I don't know. It's a theory. Uh, yeah, you should you should have the Brushwood character in your drawing look a little distracted. Yes, exactly. Then, so, and have a chat but what, room so what do you think? Does, does Carl Icahn waiting in? Is he just he ruined Blockbuster? A lot of people think because he came in and and bought a big chunk of them, started messing around with their board, and ran off the CEO who was who was doing things to make Blockbuster a a significant competitor to Netflix, and, and Carl Icahn's choice shifted their strategy back to brick and mortar stores, and we know where Blockbuster is today related to Netflix. Nowhere, uh, and, and so is he about to do the same thing to Netflix? Uh, you know, it's tough for me to know when it comes to any of that insider uh, baseball stuff with you know, who's in charge of what CEO and what stock, blah, blah, blah. That's that's real tough for me to wrap my mind around. The one thing I know for sure looking at this is uh, there's no doubt that Netflix is the bell of the ball right now. And it seems as though Netflix is dominance in this field as being a leading voice for for shaping the new way everyone gets their media is is only getting stronger and stronger and and it's a good it's a good thing that we are seeing this kind of action happen because so far as we've seen to, up to this point i think that netflix has done a very good job of thinking very long term about the way people want to get their uh, media and what kind of media they want to to receive well, we, we don't want to get too much into the, the stock market aspect of that because that's mostly what the story is about is poison pills and how they prevent some kind of proxy battle. And, well, hopefully that stuff doesn't happen. But it is really unnerving if you're Netflix to have the guy that most people think killed your biggest competitor, Blockbuster, uh, suddenly own close to 10% of your company. And so they have put a poison pill uh, right uh, provision in that if anyone gets more than 10% of the company that doesn't have director approval, uh, they can fight it off. Let's take a break and thank our sponsor, Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. And let me tell you, if you want reliability from a web hosting provider, maybe you think it's a little much to, to have like a, a four nines or whatever. How about this? How about a web hosting provider that will face down a hurricane and carry buckets of fuel 17 floors to their generator just to keep your website running? Good uh, enough Tom, for you? That's a, 
That's a fantasy. There's no company so dedicated to its customers that in the middle of one of the largest hurricanes to make landfall north of North Carolina, that they would dedicate themselves not to their families. Look at your screen, Brushwood. Look at your what? screen and tell those people that. What? Uh, those are uh, some Squarespace employees, some Peer 3 employees, some other web host employees that all team together to keep the servers running at the co-location in Manhattan, uh, a bucket brigade, an actual good old-fashioned bucket brigade. So when you hear people complaining because they think it's cool in the checkout line or on the bus, like, you and your gadgets, well, you know, pe people need to live in the real world. Say, you know what keeps this gadget running? You know what keeps this website? Freaking people carrying buckets of fuel up 17 flights of stairs. Is that real enough for you? And then say, by the way, if you want a website, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code FRAMERATE11. You get 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. Dude, if there's ever a moment, and we've talked about for, uh, Squarespace for a million times, and if, you're, if you've been living under a rock, they have a fantastic interface, super easy to make websites, blogs, portfolios, anything, scales awesomely, looks good on all mobile devices. Uh, you know all of this, but if there was ever one of those moments where like, but do they have a heart? And the answer is, duh, they're living beings and Shame on you for suggesting <laughs> otherwise. They're suggesting that they're zombies. Of That's right. Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, we'll say it here if nobody else were. Squarespace, not populated by zombies. Exactly. Now it's on the table. It's proven. Uh, but seriously, try out squarespace.com. Absolutely free. Uh, you don't have to take our word for it. You can import your blog. Give it a shot if you do decide to buy it. Don't forget about free domain registration if you buy a year at a time. But either whether you buy a year or you buy a month, you get 10% off your first purchase on new accounts with the code FRAMERATE11. Uh, but it doesn't, you don't have to give them a credit card or anything to try. So just go there, squarespace.com, press that get started button, and you're on your way to an easy and reliable website. We thank Squarespace not only for their support of frame rate, but uh, for their incredibly dedicated employees uh, and all the folks at, at Peer, I think it was Peer One, I hope I'm getting that right, but all the people at the Colo uh, who, who you really just like went above and beyond uh, to keep their services running. Let's move on to the slipstream. So uh, did you vote, Brian, or are you going to vote? Or are you... I did. I voted, I voted early. I voted the other did day. Did you vote I often? My bike. I, can, I can honestly say, like, so I can sound smug and superior, I rode my bike 24 miles round trip to go vote. That's wow, how much really? I cared. Wow. wow. I yeah. just had my ballot mailed was, to me. Now, granted, it was an utterly gorgeous day <laughs> at 69 degrees <laughs> and not a cloud in the sky. So it didn't really feel as tough as it was. But I was, and I was your bike was tied forward. to the back of a pickup truck dri driven right. by John. But, <laughs> but yes. it was 24 miles. Uh, no, well, uh, <laughs> if you haven't voted, uh, YouTube, or even if you have, YouTube is soliciting people to share their voting. Now, obviously, the immediate jokes uh, are going to be like, you know, don't don't go into the ballot booth and film people actually casting their secret ballots. Uh, it's supposed to be sharing your experience of voting. Len, Len, did you vote yet? Do you vote early over there in Ohio? Uh, I, I haven't had a chance to vote. I will be voting tomorrow morning. Your vote actually counts because you're in Ohio. Yes, it's a big it's a big deal, and I am I am really. I don't know, man. I don't. So I, how, no, was, seriously, cut to the chase. How much money did they pay you for your vote, man? You could sell <laughs> up a lot of cash. Uh, I don't want to get into it, but uh, but yes, uh, I, I am. Um, You'll I'm be retiring comfortably. Great, yes, I will be retiring, and uh, everything will be everything will be just fine. No, I am. Um, I have not voted yet, though. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be quite uh, a day tomorrow at the polls. Looking forward to it. I, I like this documenting your vote project. I mean, it's not. It's, Honestly, am I going to go and watch a lot of these videos? No, I'm not. But, no, uh, but, but uh, some people you know might. This is, this is in some ways a hedge because what you do is you create a bunch of citizen journalists who are at least there to document what's happening. And think about it. Uh, when you hear stories of voter fraud, it's always in places where you don't expect it and there's sneak attacks in the middle of the night or, or you know, the, the allegations here or there. And when you have cameras everywhere, the more transparency there is, the better it is for everyone. People will think twice sure. before they try to, you know, pull something sneaky. I mean, I think I think we need more transparency with the voting process in general. And the more kids with cameras out there, I think the better. And YouTube is going to have an election hub like they did for the debates, like they did for the conventions, where they'll be doing coverage of, of the results coming in live, et cetera, et cetera. And this is, I think this is meant to kind of fill that out and, and, and bring the audience into uh, whatever you're watching that night. And so that's kind of cool. Uh, however, what is even cooler 
is ordering a streaming movie and a pizza from the same place. Oh. Okay. Oh, uh, 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 all right. First of all, set this story up, then we'll talk about it. Uh, Domino's is uh, is trying to get you to order pizza from them in the UK by launching Pizza Box Office. Uh, they actually only have one deal with uh, Lionsgate UK Cinema. But the idea is when you order your pizza and they deliver your pizza, you also get a code for a free streaming movie. You can only watch it on a mobile device. Uh, so, you know, early days, it's not necessarily perfect. Uh, but the idea is kind of there. Like, hey, I want to sit down. I want to watch a movie. Order a pizza. I get a free movie. This is an absolutely brilliant idea that's being attempted exactly 14 years too late. Like, think about this. If this was 1997 and all of a sudden Blockbuster had a deal where it's like, order a pizza. We show up. We give you. You tell us what movie you want. We bring you a physical disc and then you play it and then drop it in the mail the next day. How, how brilliant would that have been, man? But this, but now it's modern day. So it's like order a pizza and then you're going to get a movie, but we're not going to bring it to you. We'll just kind of wave our hands and say, ah, go log in on this site and you'll be able to have this really tiny selection and then you can watch it, I guess. I don't really care. Yeah, how dare they give you a free and easy way to watch a movie? What jerks. <laughs> no, but it's not It's not free and easy. Like, if, if it was a physical disc being hand-delivered, that would be an extraordinary value back in the days when we needed physical media and everyone wanted it. But instead, offering just a streaming thing, uh, I mean, I understand that, you know, people don't want a subscription. They want to be able to just buy a movie and then watch it, and this is a starting point. But at this point, they're a very, very late entry for an idea that would have been great if it was even five, eight years ago. But uh, but nowadays, it just seems too little too late. I disagree. I really do. I mean, I don't think this is the the right implementation of this, but the idea of free movie with my pizza, I think, is still valid. I think, I think if it was, hey, it's a code for Amazon, so if you you're already streaming Amazon movies. Now you get a free rental. Or if it was with Apple, uh, then I think it would be brilliant. Uh, it just it just needs to be with a service that's already out there. I think I think you're right. It is a little wonky because although theoretically I just click a link, put in a number, and watch my movies, that sounds great. I know these things never work that well when they're not a known system. So I would trust it more if it was in a system I already use to watch streaming movies, and then I think it'd be fantastic. Sure. Sure, I agree. All right. Well, shoot. Well, let's try to disagree about this next story then. Uh, EFF uh, coming in on the side of Aereo in their case. Last Friday, uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation uh, filed a brief on behalf of Aereo in their fight against ABC, Fox, Univision, Disney, CBS, and NBC uh, that Aereo should not have the right to stream over-the-air channels uh, two subscribers of the Aereo service. EFF staff attorney Mike, or, I'm sorry, Mitch Stoltz said just because Aereo's system sends TV signals to customers doesn't mean that Aereo needs permission from the broadcasters. Personal TV transmissions do not violate copyright. It's a private use. The copyright law doesn't reach. This is a craven attempt by TV executives to profit from technology that they didn't think of first. Broadcasters have exclusive use of a scarce public resource the airwaves, and that privilege carries with it a responsibility to serve the public. Obviously, the public benefits by having alternative ways to enjoy TV content. That is some awesome and delightfully harsh language that they're using. Craven tactics. I love it, dude. Yeah. Uh, so really, uh, there's not much to discuss on this, but the uh, EFF, always good at the rhetoric and uh, weighing in on the side of area, which that, that lawsuit still continues to carry on. Let's talk about tube tops. Tube Top's all about the set-top boxes that bring you the video that you want to watch to your television. Uh, just a brief uh, note here, XBMC, I know a lot of folks out there use XBMC as their set-top box op operating system. XBMC 12 Frodo has entered a development and beta releases are expected mid this month. Yeah, dude, no, great. That's awesome. So, uh, XBMC fans, you got something coming. Uh, here's something that's sort of cats and dogs sleeping together. The BBC iPlayer, which if you don't know, allows you to stream all of the BBC video on demand, is now coming to the Sky Plus set-top box. Sky Plus is a cable system in the UK. So, so these are fierce competitors. BBC free, government supported over the air. Uh, Sky Plus pay with their own channels competing directly with the bbc of course you can get the bbc on sky plus but you know it's an over-the-air channel of course you can now sure. you'll be able to watch the iplayer from your internet connected sky plus box 
Yeah, dude, it's awesome. And uh, I'm glad to see that kind of crossover and uh, cooperation. I would, if only something like that could happen with our content and Hulu on top boxes. Mm, if only. Uh, if and only. then Wired had a review of the D Link DSM 312 Movie Night Plus. And I, I threw it in the lineup because a lot of times people say, why do you only ever talk about Apple TV and Roku? You never talk about all, there's all these other Western digitals and Sony boxes and all these things out here. Uh, so I figured, all right, well, we, we've got a new review here. Let's talk about the D Link. It's $80, so it's about the same price as the Roku XD, but it doesn't have as many apps. And it's got built-in app buttons on the remote, so if they ever do add apps, suddenly your remote doesn't work as well as it used to. Uh, to me, nobody is doing things as well as the Roku. This is a fine box, don't get me wrong, but all they have is Netflix, YouTube, Pandora, Picasa, and Vudu. That's it. Yeah, but don't underestimate the power of less is more. I'm not going to say it's all better right, right. because there's, there's. I'm saying like you know for the for the grandma circuit for uh, for our parents circuit like uh, you know this may be exactly what they want. It doesn't look intimidating. It doesn't look overly complicated. I like Netflix. I like Pandora, and I like YouTube. There they are. Boo ba doo ba doo. What's this voodoo thing? Let me try it out. Oh, that those are movies I like. Well, speaking of grandmas, let's, let's ask Lynn. Uh... <laughs> Are you a grandmother? Great. He knows. He knows a lot of grandmothers. Yes, I was, just, I was I trying do. to apply that Len is no, but Len, uh, so if I come to you and I say, "Here are two boxes. They're both eighty dollars, and they're both easy to set up. You plug them into the internet. You plug them into your television, and you stream videos. One gives you these five apps, and one gives you like thirty to forty apps from different services. Which one would you like better? Uh, probably neither, only because um, I have. Uh, I recently purchased like a DVD player that gives me apps. And ah, okay. I'm like, I tried using it. I thought, oh, that's really cool. Wow, this is really neat. I was looking at the box. I'm thinking this is terrific. Used it. I'm thinking this is, I mean, it's just so clumsy. And honestly, there's no reason for me to want to use apps on something else that I can't trust. You know, like I, I have the apps on my phone. I have the apps on my iPad. I, I, like I don't, I don't need something else with apps, and and it's and 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 what I've seen so far, and I, I granted I'm not all over the place on this stuff. Is it, the stuff I've seen is not well integrated. It's not. It doesn't work correctly. Well, so you know, I wonder if it's your internet connection, and this is a really good point that the internet connections are not stable enough everywhere to handle a lot of these services. Perhaps, perhaps, and I'm and I'm willing to say that that's possible, uh, given that I have <clears throat> Time Warner Cable, um, but. Uh, you know, I even then, even then, I was like, I, I had like they offered me Netflix on this Blu-ray player. I'm trying to remember what if, if it was a Sony, if it was a Samsung. I can't remember, but anyway, I was I was using it, and I'm like, oh man, this is just. I mean, I thought that Netflix on TiVo was 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 clumsy. Netflix on my Blu-ray player is even more clumsy. Oh, Netflix um, on TiVo is absolutely awful, and, and I know yes. the apps on a lot of these DVD players are actually pretty bad. Uh, so I'm not yeah. surprised at that. The the Netflix app on Google TV and on Roku, I find very good, very usable. Okay. Well, I have not. Yeah, I have not used anything else. I I see Netflix on everything, and I just assume that it's going to be, you know, not that great. So um, so uh, as a consumer, and I guess you know someone with not a great internet connection, I suppose um, that would not uh, in, uh, entice me to want. Uh, uh, just to want it. So I'm and, not really that interested in it. And, and this is a really good point, Brian. Uh, Netflix being everywhere can be a downside because they don't control the interface everywhere. And so some people look at Netflix on, say, a TiVo and say, ooh, I don't, I don't like Netflix apps. They're, they're horrible. And, and, they're, yeah. and the thing is, they're, they're different all over the place. Yeah, and if uh, if uh, Netflix was in a different place, I would say that might be a problem for its brand. But I think it's it always reflects more on the hardware trying yeah. to reach Netflix than on the Netflix service itself. Walmart is selling the boxy TV set top box for ninety nine dollars. That's the one that includes an antenna built in. Uh, it's got clear cam. Uh, it's got the ability to have that cloud DVR so you can store an unlimited amount of shows in the cloud as long as you pay the monthly fee. You do get a certain amount of months free when you buy this, so, so they're trying to get you sucked into using that cloud DVR. Uh, but huge get for Boxy to get the distribution of Walmart. Brian, do you think that that's the right audience uh, for something like Boxy. This is the, the simplest and easiest to use Boxy TV they've ever made. It's, it's a total chicken and egg thing, right? Because it's like, uh, is it ubiquitous and simple 
and well known because it's at Walmart, or does it get? Did it get into Walmart because they it's ubiquitous and well known? I think it's good for distribution. Uh, I read some interesting books about the way uh, Walmart's business practices are. They're relentlessly looking to uh, make more efficient the supply chain and make reductions in cost. And uh, you know, uh, Snapper, uh, the uh, the lawnmower company, actually ended up rejecting it. Give yeah, up. They right. said we're out. I read about that too. About cheaper buying everything. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. On the one hand, it could be a huge hit at uh, at Christmas this year, but uh, or or it may end up uh, just being kind of a weird side journey. I, I know a lot of geeks are upset about the boxy move uh, because what they see is the end of the boxy geeky box, the one that you could that was based on XBMC that you could install on an Apple TV, the one that you could install on your home media PC. Uh, that's been that's been you know ended. They're not going to support that anymore. Uh, the, you don't have the weird quirky box on its side anymore. This is a very mainstream consumer oriented product, and the the coup de grace is that it's in Walmart. Oh my God, horrible. Right. The horror. Uh, it's going to be next to the trampolines. I hate it. But really, in the end, this is a great thing for Boxy because you know what? Walmart is very successful. A lot of people shop there. Uh, and, yes. and you're going to have a good, nice, big footprint of people using your box. You know case. what? I'm actually, Tom, I'm thinking about uh, making a movie, sort of sort of a docudrama about all this. Oh, in yeah? which. Uh, in which it's like it's got like sneaky back alley deals where Walmart lures in uh, poor innocent Boxy. Boxy's walking down this uh, this. In fact, it, it takes place just after Hurricane Sandy, and Boxy's walking down this old alley, and then Walmart says, "Hello, little girl." And Boxy says, no, I'm, I'm a streaming box. Uh, no, I'm Boxy. Avner oh. Ronan, CEO of Boxy, uh, I, not a little girl. Yeah, exactly. And then he <laughs> snatches Boxy, throws him in these, and all of a sudden there's bright lights and these hordes of people come in slow motion. And they're all like, and it's Black Friday. And they're like, ah. But the problem is um, I don't have any kind of uh, uh, equipment to... Uh, like, I'm not going to go to New York. Well, okay, so you need, you need New York, you need some storm footage, you need some yep. zombie footage. Shoppers. Lots of shoppers. Yeah, lots of <laughs> shoppers. I got, I got you set up, no problem. Pond5. Well, I'm, so, I'm sorry, who are these guys? Oh, uh, Pond5, P-O-N-D-5. They're a sponsor of Frame Rate. They're, they're paying us to talk about it right now. Oh, my gosh, really? Well, what, how can that make my docudrama dream a reality? Well, uh, if you've been listening the past, you know, 30 or so shows that they've sponsored, uh, you know that they are a stock media marketplace of video, audio, images, 3D models, uh, pretty much any of those elements that you need. Uh, you can't afford to hire a helicopter to go shoot. You, you can get at reasonable prices from Pond5, and then once you download it, you can pretty much use it legally in any of your works. What? But I'm sure that's just for, like, videos or just still images, right? Well, they they do have videos and they do have still images, but they also uh, have uh, all kinds of other stuff. They have sound effects. Sound uh, effects, I don't think. They have vector illustrations. They have 3D models. They have music. Um, pretty pretty much anything you need. It's professional quality stock media. Um, you know, if if you can't afford Len Peralta to sit in your house and draw <laughs> things for you on demand, uh, this is the next best thing because you can pretty much find anything you want. Right on. Well, if only there was some way I could, like, give it a try or, or kick some cash over to frame rate. Oh, well, there is. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, this month, you can get 15% off your purchase uh, by using the code. Now, it says frame rate 10 in my copy, but I'm pretty sure it's frame yeah, rate 11. Yeah, it's frame rate 11. 11. Uh, oh. So, so don't, don't pay attention to what came out of my mouth just now. Pay attention <laughs> to your screen. Pay attention to Liz, who's frantically saying, no, it's 11, 11, 11. I don't have enough fingers. Frame rate 11 is the code for 15% off at Pond5, P-O-N-D-5. Dot com and uh, just just go go try it out. Download something. Get get the discount. They have really good stuff over there. Pond five p o n d five dot com. We thank them for their support of Frame Rate. Shall we uh, check in on some film film? Yes, we shall. Now, film film is our section where we talk about things you can watch uh, either online or in theaters or TV shows. And what's weird is this morning, there was nothing in our film film section. In fact, I was like, well, we don't have to do a film film section if there's nothing. But let me look around. I found a couple things. And then it just kept building and building. And then Rabbit Badger sent us something. And all of a sudden, we have this, like, amazing, fun-filled film film segment, starting with the story Rabbit Badger sent to me on Twitter. Battlestar Galactica's prequel, Blood and Chrome, will be released this Friday 
online. Yeah, but uh, specifically on Machinima on their on their YouTube channel, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is still a sci-fi property, and they're still going to air it on sci-fi as a mini-series, essentially. It's no longer going to be a full-on series. That's not changing. Uh, but your first view of it will be on the Machinima channel at machinima.com, on their YouTube channel, actually. And that'll be re- the first episode will be released, released Friday, and remaining episodes will be rolled out over the next four weeks. Machinima, number one in the deadline ranking of YouTube channels last week. So they're, they're killing it, and it's only going to get better. Uh, then... After it airs, so to speak, online, in early 2013, the two-hour version of, uh, of it will air on sci-fi. Then it will follow on DVD. So instead of the, what we usually see is like, oh, we, we want to put it on air, and then we put it out on DVD, and then we delay the online till later, they're leading with the online right from the start, and not on sci-fi.com. Yeah, and it, well, and I'll tell you, this is also an interesting kind of side jog for uh, Machinima. It, it, it's a perfect match as far as the demographic of the people watching Machinima. But of course, Machinima's core brand is about uh, video game related content. I mean, originally it was just seeing stuff made within video game engines and so on. But now, uh, you know, we're seeing we're seeing original series like the the Halo series. And uh, other projects. I, this is great news for Machinima. This is actually great news for people who dig Battlestar Galactica. I can't wait to see this. And don't forget, uh, a, a few people were like, wait a minute, prequel, Battlestar Galactica. It follows young William Adama during the first Cylon War. So it tells some of that backstory. Not as far back uh, as the other prequel. Uh, as which, Caprica. Yeah, as, as Caprica. Uh, also, we got some new plot details around Johnny Depp's sci-fi film Transcendence. Uh, Wally Pfister is directing that. He's the the Dark Knight Rises cinematographer, uh, and Christopher Nolan is involved in this as well. The Hollywood Porter, uh, the Hollywood Reporter, describes the film as in the vein of 2001: A Space Odyssey. And the Wrap posted this summary: The story follows three scientists attempting to work on stem cell and advanced computer technology, which will change the fundamentals of human life. Tension comes into play when they are met by protest and resistance. Wow, I was really hoping it would be even more vague than that. But uh, I guess well, Johnny Depp uh, plays a husband who gets sucked into the computer. All right, Tron. Yeah, or uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Or like um, it's Electric Dreams, is what it is. It's about a computer that becomes alive and falls in love with someone else's girlfriend. Uh, Len, you're 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 making this amazing poster of us over there quietly in the corner. That that's impressive. It's a frame rate celebrating 100 shows, little uh, caricature, not caricature, it's a nice little picture of me and Brian, uh, and even an acknowledgement that Jason Howe is over there off camera somewhere. (laughs) Well done, man. Looks awesome, man. Very well done. Thank you. Uh, J.J. Abrams uh, is going to make a kid's show about an Etsy project. These are the Beastlies. They're little figurines (laughs) that you can buy on Etsy. They have no backstory. Sometimes you can buy toys, like vinyl toys and stuff, and they have this whole backstory. No backstory for the Beastlies, but apparently J.J. Abrams has bought the rights uh, to create a kids series that, well, there they are, uh, that will follow the adventures of the Beastlies in sort of a Smurfs for the modern generation. This Mm. is actually not too far off from the way stuff originally was created for uh, old cartoon shows in the 80s when all of a sudden every toy could have a cartoon and they had the toys and they're like, "Ah, I don't know, let's make up some story for it. And in this case, he just found this particularly uh, popular line. I assume it's popular. Yeah, it's uh, very popular. In fact, if you go back to it, uh, Jason, and scroll down, you can see more of the Beastlies uh, because those are all the pink ones, but they're all kinds of colors. They're very cute. People just think like, you've probably seen things like this before, but these are like extra cute. This is brilliant, man. Look, it's like if you, you can make up the, the heart of good storytelling. Once you have that knack, and J.J. Abrams certainly has that knack, uh, once you have that down, you can kind of dress up any objects or products and uh, turn them into something interesting. And I'm excited to see what he comes up with. Alan Moore and Mitch Jenkins have put this out a trailer here. for a 30-minute short film called Jimmy's End. First time Alan Moore has ever written something specifically for video. This is weird. Yeah, we should take a look at, at just some of this. It's uh, I don't even know what to expect from this. Of course, Alan Moore writes a lot of awesome stuff in the comic book world. Um, I don't know what to think of this. A 30-minute... The fictional world of Jimmy's End is, as I understand it, only a very slightly exaggerated version 
of the real territory that the narrative takes place in. Yeah, it looks very David Lynch, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does. Dreams <laughs> and possibly nightmares seem to get caught in a kind of circling weather system that is never entirely dissipated. Those dreams sometimes curdle or congeal into the most extraordinary characters, which is rather the area that I'm interested in. What do you think of this, Len? I don't know what to think about that. That seems, uh, <laughs> it, it is, you know, like you said, it's very Lynchian, but I don't know, is that enough uh, uh, for me to watch it? I don't know. I it's mean, only, it's a 30 minute short, you know, so. Well, I guess if I have 30 minutes, yeah. Are you I'll drawing a beastly? I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, J.J. Abrams can hire me. I uh, I am coming up with my other called the Feastlies. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's nothing like the Beastlies. But, uh, I Unless J.J. Yeah, J. Abrams I, hires you. Yes, I'm creating it for J.J. Abrams, and um, and hopefully he'll see it and be like, you know what? I'm going to back that, too. That's that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, <laughs> coming up with it. Then all the thing about the Feastlies is that all they do is just walk around with these thumbs up because they love J.J. <laughs> Abrams. <laughs> so it's, it's, they're kind of a suck up is what you're saying. They're, yes, they're, they're the yes men of J.J. Abrams. <laughs> Uh, finally, in film film, uh, don't watch the startups Silicon Valley reality show on Bravo. Instead, watch Law Work, uh, the documenting the lives of the cheeseburger folks in Seattle who do law cats, among many other things. Ars Technica gave it a pretty tepid review, but frankly, I love this. I think it's Bravo being like, look, we're going to give you a really cheesy The Hills Jersey Shore version of tech. Uh, and that's going to be Startup Silicon Valley, and it's going to be over the top. And then we're going to give you a very real, more on the real world side of things, like honest to goodness look at the people in Seattle doing I Can Has Cheeseburger and what's going on. And you, the public, you choose. Which one do you like better? I uh, have no idea what to expect from this, but I'm down for giving it a try. I mean, it's um, it, it, is it reality, reality, faux reality? Yeah, no, it's a, the, the thing is, Startup Silicon Valley is reality reality right a lot of people right. are like this some of this has got to be like set up scripted etc uh on the other hand the uh the wall work thing there may be some business that's set up that's the way they do it but they're like in the conference room and they're talking they're going through their daily meeting and and talking about you know the amount of cat pictures on the website and kind of conversations that would only happen at a place like i can cheeseburger so uh right. I, I think it's more documentary uh than not huh well that'll be interesting it sure will. I'll watch it. <laughs> Let's check in on the NSFW show frame rate movie draft. Oh, things are about to get interesting. Father Robert Balasar still in front, of course. He came out to an early lead, and he's got a nice, nice padding. 184 million. Brian Brushwood on his heels, though, at 180 million. And then it falls off to Justin Robert Young. Uh, and, and then way off to myself and Scott Johnson, Sarah Lane. Uh, she's banking on the big movie Twilight. Uh, she's only got 12 million. And, and we're getting close to those days when the big guns are coming out. Wreck It Ralph did 49 million for you, Brian, and that puts you in the race. That's not bad. I mean, not in the race. I, I don't think there's uh, the only way. Well, I put you I'm in the, the race, current race. So I don't. Yeah, I don't know about. For the Beckett future. Ralph has to break two hundred million, and then Lincoln has to break two hundred million for me to have a chance. I'm screwed. I'm out. I'm out of this. Uh, but uh, but I am happy to finally be entering the realm of respectability. Uh, at well, this and point, you might I'm you might still... get in front after this week because you have Lincoln. Lincoln comes out this week along with Skyfall. Scott Johnson has Skyfall, so we can see both of you guys rocking up. Remember to the top. also that uh, Lincoln has like limited release this week, and then it and then it ramps up. Uh, word of advice for everyone in the future: I think that in the winter movie draft, holiday holiday releases matter much much more than during the summer like mm. in summer we worry a lot about like the quality of spectacle the power of the brand and that kind of stuff how anticipated something is but at some point like if it's on if it's on thanksgiving it's going to make a mint and in two weeks sarah lane will be in first place yes because yes twilight breaking dawn although part two, again out. rise of the guardians the only santa claus movie coming out and it's right at Thanksgiving? And that, that's another week. That's another week. Yeah, that's three weeks down the road. Though. 
I'm just saying. You're always trying to... You're like that that guy in my fantasy baseball league who's always complimenting my team, and I'm like, why? <laughs> what, what are you trying to trade for? I've already for? decided, man. You got this thing. Look, it's it's too late for me, young man. But I can <laughs> I can live vicariously through my belief in your picks. <laughs> Let's talk about what we're watching. Of course, we're uh, both watching The Walking Dead. We'll save that for a spoiler zone uh, after the, the end of the main show. Uh, I've been watching uh, Fringe. Uh, it's, it's been great. Uh, I've been watching uh, Downton Abbey, as I mentioned. Uh, what have you been watching, Brian? Uh, I'm watching Sons of Anarchy uh, and Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I was a little bit soft on Always Sunny until this week. This week, they knocked it out of the park. It was one of the funniest episodes I've ever seen. And uh, in fact, if you have never seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia, this last week might be a good one just to dive in on. And then um, uh, I guess uh, Sons of Anarchy, still good, uh, a little bit soft. Uh, I like where they're going with it. And uh, more important than The Walking Dead show, I finally purchased and started playing The Walking Dead video game. Oh, by that's Games. awesome. Yeah. Gary Witt is involved uh, in that. That's right. Written by Gary Witter, who wrote uh, Book of Eli and, of course, a uh, former editor in chief PC Gamer magazine. And uh, I played, not a lie, I played the first three minutes and stopped thinking, I need to play this and live stream the whole experience because <laughs> it's going to be an epic tale and I want to experience it with other people watching live. So as soon as I get back from on the road and have time, I'm going to live stream the entire playthrough. I think uh, the final episode of the whole thing comes out later this month now len you had power outage uh, have you even been able to watch much this week we caught up uh over uh thursday we we were we actually went to apple tv downloaded some shows that i missed that tivo did not get um and then i have a lot we, we're just behind on a lot of things so um tonight probably gonna be watching um uh walking dead which i missed last night uh, I've also been watching. Have you guys been following up on um, uh, Comic Book Men, Kevin Smith's show? Have you been watching that? I haven't. You know, I only watched the very first episode, and I hated all the trappings of traditional uh, reality television that I saw in it. And I never went back. But I heard that it became much more like the podcast that I love from the from Spodco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually very good. And in this season, I think, I mean, there there is a lot of reality show stuff in there. Uh, there are characters and things like that, but uh, but I actually enjoy it, and uh, it's a nice little half an hour, you know, easy easy you know easy show to watch. Uh, so I've been watching that, um, and what else? I mean, I'm on the reality show kick, right? So I'm on Survivor and uh, uh, oh, what's that? Oh, Amazing Race and and sure. And that's, you know, you can't go wrong with those with those shows. They're just fun to watch. Um, and uh, as far as what else am I watching? Got back into Community again after I was like I was I was sad to see the Community isn't coming back till February now. Mm-hmm. So I had to get a. Uh, I just went back and watched a bunch of Communities and 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 looking forward for that to come back. Um, the Office I was watching. I didn't think that that was. Um, that it started off strong. I don't think it's as good a season as it as it was. I thought it was going to be shaping up to be. I think the writing has gotten kind of low on that. But everything else, um, you know, Walking Dead and uh, and um, oh, Hoarders too. That's my other favorite. <laughs> I love watching so, Hoarders. That's sort of a cautionary tale. <laughs> yes, I just you know I I. I don't know why I watch that show. I mean, it makes me makes me physically ill. But it's shot just Freud. That's why you. That's why you watch. <laughs> Probably. It. Well, just to remind myself that, like, hey, you don't. Your house doesn't look that bad. You know. I mean, just just that put guy. away a couple things, and everything will be all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's uh, finish up with a little bit of feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. So uh, we, don't, we don't have a lot of time, and we got a lot of feedback on whether historical facts spoil movies or not. Brian, do you think you can make an attempt to sort of sum up? Yeah, I'm uh, going to say, uh, I'm gonna say uh, I started reading them in, in reverse order. Well, apparently I'm getting an alarm. I'm under attack at the moment. Uh, I started reading them in reverse order, and there was a cluster of all these supporting Tom, and I'm like, oh, man, nobody agrees with me. And then there's a whole cluster of supporting Brian, but a couple of my favorites, uh, they, they all made good uh, 
basically take saying, uh, look, you know, I didn't know that this happened and it, you know, really would have messed up things for me. But I love this one. Um, Andre in Montreal says, I just want to say that I disagree about historical spoilers. Being Canadian means my knowledge of U.S. history is limited. And Tom divulging sensitive information can indeed ruin my watching of these historical movies. For instance, I can search most Canadian documents on the subject of Abraham Lincoln and nowhere do I find any details of his days as a vampire hunter. Please don't spoil my view of the world. Hey, what? what? Uh, he was a then, vampire hunter? Thanks a lot, buddy. Apparently. <laughs> uh, we also had the guy who wrote the original That's question. That's why I Harry. don't read the titles of movies before I go in to watch them. <laughs> I'll tell you what. There's some part of me that wishes I could have that purity. Like, my friend Brady got to experience Looper not knowing a damn thing about it except for something Bruce Willis science fiction. You know, and, and here's uh, here's the thing, right? Like I am let, let me be clear. A lot of lot, first of all, I thought it was interesting that a lot of people jumped on me not for spoiling the historical facts but for spoiling the part about police cars as if that were the big reveal. Well, no, no, and no. Here, like, like, here's like, the, like you that yeah, moment no, you no, turned I, I, like, no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, okay. Because if you explain it, then you're spoiling it again. Yes, yes. Okay? (laughs) So I just, I'm like, that, I didn't think of that as actually being a spoiler, but I get what they're saying. Uh, On the other hand, I, 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 I do think we're way too sensitive about spoilers, and I'm not being a jerk. I apologize to a guy on Twitter who said I ruined Argo for him, and I'm sorry I ruined Argo for you, man. Uh, But I don't think it absolutely, like, ruins your life and ruins your day. Is it a jerk move to tell a twist ending to an M. Night Shyamalan movie? It's probably a jerk move to go to one. But it's still a jerk move <laughs> to, to ruin a twist ending like that. But we're getting like, we're backing it up like, well, if it's a jerk move to re- to re- reveal a twist ending, it's a jerk move to reveal any ending. And if it's a jerk move to reveal any ending, it's a jerk move to reveal the middle plot. And if it's a jerk move to reveal the middle plot, it's a jerk move to reveal like any of the plot. And if it's a jerk move to reveal any of the plot, it's a jerk move to say anything about the movie, at which point we can't talk. So this there's, there's, awesome. ga- there's got to be a line. This is awesome because usually it's me who's stuck in this position trying to, to defend and explain how, every, well, if that's true, then why not everything? Gah! Uh, we should point out that Barry Neal's the one who sent over the original question, and he says, thanks for the apology. Wasn't looking for it, but always appreciate it. Now, spoiler to the audio listeners, but that's a picture of Alan Moore that I yes. think Len... <laughs> or is that me with my beard grown out, Len? Which one is... This is, yeah, this is you in the year 2018, Tom. <laughs> After I you have cut look, all cords, you have cut all cords. I will we also, look like uh, Alan real Moore. quick from uh, from fan Shorty. Uh, he got some some stuff. You know, part of the reason we dismiss 3D or, or, or just skeptical of it is because you got to wear the dark, the glasses that make it even darker. Uh, and there's apparently a company, and if we can see a little bit of the video, uh, Christy Digital is, is is creating a 3D projector that uses lasers, and it has. If you watch the video on it, and I'm sure yeah, we'll have the link yeah, in, in the show there, notes. So. Uh, but the 65,000 lumens is how bright this thing is. It's so bright that you, you wear the glasses and it doesn't matter. It's still super bright and immersive. And uh, I believe this is footage from uh, from some, like if I'm not mistaken in the background there, it looks like you see a traditional DLP projector and then the laser one underneath. And it's like night and day. So I'll be interested to see how that turns out. All right, that's it for this episode of Frame Rate. Len Peralta, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for oh. your amazing drawings uh, during the thank show, you. Uh, for your perspective, and, and tell folks where they can find more of your work online and what you're up to these days. Yes, uh, you can find me at lenperalta.com, also online at Len Peralta. I just opened up a new shop. Uh, it's called per- peraltartsy.shopify.com. <laughs> you can get a lot of prints um, I did a print, uh, a new uh, Walking Dead community uh, mashup print that's there. I also have some of my geeky pinups that are available. I'm also available for commissions. So if you like, if you've been watching what I've been doing, um, hit me up for some commissions, man. I'd love to, you know, it's perfect holiday gift, I guess. Peraltartsy.shopify.com? Yeah. That yeah you can get to me. it from lenperalta.com. Oh, just go to lenperalta.com. All right. Yeah. That's, that's all that stuff. That's the thing to do. All right, thank you folks uh, for watching or listening. You can find us live on live.twit.tv every Monday at 3 p.m., 3.30 p.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, We're also on demand all the time at twit.tv slash fr. And send us your reasons why I suck for spoiling movies to frame rate at twit.tv. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Don't watch trailers. They spoil everything. Be nice to Tom. Breathe
these people! All right, now we're not going to start the spoiler zone immediately. Well, they're out of all, for earshot. One, for one thing, to give you all time if you don't want to be spoiled to get away, but also to give Jason sure. time to get the crap out of here. Tony, I don't want to know about this. Because Jason didn't get a chance to watch Walking Dead yet. And uh, this especially is an episode that you shouldn't be spoiled on. Uh, they, they, all of that spoiler conversation in the main show aside, this is, I think we all can agree. Uh, this is qualifies as a twist, as a thing that you do not want to be spoiled on. Yes. All right. Well, is, and, and it definitely safely, was. Uh, like, are, are we are we clear? Well, I'll tell you. Let's let's start with the. Well, okay. Can we say it? Are we clear? Clear. I guess. Clear. He's still okay. in the room, but he, I guess he's got headphones on, so we're good. Rick kisses T Dog. I couldn't very, believe it either, but they're so perfect together. <laughs> no, that's uh, uh, not. Part of that's spoiling uh, Brian's fan fiction, actually. That's so. right, <laughs> right. Oh, oh, is that not what we're reviewing? I thought that was. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, I'm off. Of okay, that. so uh, having read the book, you're actually kind of spoiled. But at what point did you know what was going to happen in this episode? I didn't at all. Even really? even at the end. Oh, I saw I, it. I saw it coming. I was like, "Yep, this this is where we lose her." Uh, I, well, I mean, I I figured, yes. I, I figured that was the case because as they soon as they got up, separated, I was like, "They're gonna, they're gonna take care of this. They're gonna, well, okay, they're not gonna so, chain around with the, the, this one." So first of all, uh, I, I think we're gonna have to do a double spoiler disclaimer here because we need to explain how it was handled in the comic book and how it was handled in this this particular episode. Yeah, uh, if you don't and let's, care, let's let's avoid talking too much about how it's handled in the comic book until. The end, maybe, okay. if right, we can. Right, we'll save that to the end. So, uh, so that the people who haven't read the comic book can keep watching. Yeah, Right. Lori, Lori dies giving birth to uh, the baby. We're talking about uh, the TV show now. We're not talking about the book. Right, correct. And um, the, uh, uh, the, there is this awesome moment because they had set up previously, like she was concerned. I haven't felt any motion. What if it dies inside me? Does it come back because it's got the disease that makes a zombie and this thing tears me out from the inside? And, uh, you know, they have to do basically they're trapped. And so they're like, you know, just just cut me open and take the baby. And uh, then she bleeds out. And there's this moment where the baby, of course, is not reacting. And they, they do a good job of, you know, as babies do, they look mottled and gray and covered in slime when you when you first have them. Uh, and and so almost zombie ish. I don't want to think of it that way. But then uh, but then the baby kicks and it all of a sudden is pink, pink and squealing. Um, it was a good moment. It was a great moment in TV. And universally, everybody was blown away by this. You you could see the chatter on Twitter. In fact, I was a little bit annoyed. I was trying to watch the episode a couple hours behind everyone else, and everyone's just like, oh, I'm Jay Walking Dead. What? Crazy. I'm insane. And that certainly colored my experience because you're trying to, you could kind of guess. You're like, okay, well, it looks like my guess is she doesn't survive. And the only question is, you know, does is the baby a zombie or, or healthy? Um, for the show, I'm going to say I'm happy with how they did everything. It was good. I only wish for two things. I wish, first of all, that we had another episode of ramping up her passion for making sure this baby survives because all mm. we'd really seen was her more worried about her own self if it dies inside. Uh, and the other thing I really, really wish is that an episode of this, uh, you know, momentousness was not wrapped up in a really weak monster of the week episode, which I didn't expect, you know, it's like, yeah, it's me, the forgotten prisoner that nobody knows. And I'm going to attract a bunch of zombies in here. Really? And, uh, yeah, that I didn't was, like you, it. You didn't, that, that, huh. I didn't think well, that at all. Well, plan didn't make any sense. Huh? And, uh, and no, it, they it, ran that guy off and he was pissed. Makes perfect sense that he's just like, he's crazy. He's pissed off at them. Uh, and so he, he just messes with them. And, and, and in this world, when you mess with somebody, it, it has huge repercussions. And it sets up the chance for the other two prisoners to redeem themselves yeah, maybe, in the eyes of Rick. Maybe what I really disliked was them making it a big mystery who it was. You, you saw the whole setup where it's like somebody's letting in zombies. Who could it be? Uh, and then <laughs> what? Why are you looking at me like because that? Because it, it's like, it, yeah, I thought that was good. Like, oh, who is it? I, I wonder who it is. And then when it turns out that guy, I'm like, oh, right, I forgot about that guy. Like, I, I thought it was a good twist. I don't know. I, I thought it was. You thought it was obvious or something? Like, no, no, no. I didn't think it was obvious, but it was just. Um, you I, wanted I felt, it to be Merle. 
No, it felt well. It felt out of proportion to 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 the the payoff. You know, uh, it's like if it's a minor bit guy that you saw for five minutes, don't spend a whole episode building up who the mystery of this person is. I if feel it, like that's instead, good because it's not something I expected. No, and see, that's the I, whole I, point is for it to be a surprise, be unexpected, not to be something where I'm like, oh, I saw that coming a miles away. It's the governor but, but or whatever. You, you don't think there was enough surprises in the end of that episode? You no, think I thought it was great. And more surprises the better. In fact, I was my mind was blown at the at the end of that episode because I'm like, this is Kirkman. This is back. No one is safe. You never know what's going to happen. The zombies are always going to get past your defenses, no matter what you do, because some jerk is going to muck it up. Something's going to go wrong. I just felt like this was this episode was emblematic of what I love about this franchise. And that is absolutely true. You're 100 percent right about that. I just would have. Uh, the narrative leading up to it, I thought uh, I would have enjoyed more if I was almost kind of watching and rooting for this 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 diehard like plan that he's got to to let in zombies to root out the outsiders. That might have been more interesting. Yeah, I don't see that. I, I don't see that at all. I do, I do see what you're saying about building up uh, Laura's uh, uh, connection with the baby more. That 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 would have been better. I, I, it's not like the scene was ruined for me because of that, but definitely that that could have made that even more gut-wrenching than it already was. And it was pretty darn gut-wrenching. Sure. No, it was great. I got full-on choked up. And it was really sweet. And the actual, uh, the, the I thought it's, it's hard for an actor to sell a full-on breakdown, but I believed it with Rick. And it twisted me up seeing the despair in that moment. That, um, was, some, that was some acting. Uh, and, and, and that was the moment where I'm like, yes, this is The Walking Dead. Uh, yes. You have a new baby. You have joy right on top of deep and utter despair. And every single person around is ripped to shreds by what's going on. Right. Exactly. And, uh, and, and in that respect, I thought it was really, really good. Um, as far as what did you think of the whole thing of everything going on over with the governor side of things? You know, to me, that felt like the, the amuse-bouche, you know, that, that's the thing to like, We've got this really intense, crazy plot line, and so you need something to kind of clear your palate every once in a while. So they're like, "Well, we'll go, we'll go to the governor's side and and do something kind of light and frothy that that doesn't really challenge you. Uh, kind of moves that plot along a tiny bit because because you get to see Michonne getting all suspicious about figuring out the thing with the military. But there wasn't much going on over there. It wasn't to me, it wasn't that interesting, except to see that relationship starting to build between the governor. Uh, and Andrea. Well, and, and with Rooker as well. I mean, to, you know, that moment when, when uh, yeah. I see Rooker with Merle, but, uh, you know, with Merle, uh, which, by the way, every scene still 100% every time Michael Rooker's on screen. And I don't know if it's just which characters are over in that city with them, but every time he's on, it's like he's, he's light years ahead of them in acting. It's like, I believe Merle, in a way, I don't believe any of the other characters. Yeah, no, I agree. Merle, he, he's, he is doing a fantastic job. I, do, I, lo, I like Michael Rooker. You know, I, I don't really know him like, like you do from NSFW show, but, but from the stuff that he's done on there, I think he's a great guy. Uh, and then I see Merle, and I'm like, I absolutely hate that guy. Uh, yes. and, and yet, I kind of weirdly like him a little bit. But no, I, I totally hate him. Uh, and, and, it, and it's not the same feeling at all. It's, it's so well done. Uh, Merle which, which is did. a brilliant character. Yeah, it's almost a problem because the more Merle's on there, the the more unhappy I am with the governor. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, uh, we're we're gonna move gently into comic booky spoiler territory. So uh, I, I think that we've said everything we need to say about the TV show. So yeah, hang so. up now if you don't want to hear it. But did you hang did up. you notice that little? No, you hang up first. It's, <laughs> did you notice that little thing they dropped about uh, his fam, the governor's family? Yeah, oh, about uh, his daughter. Yeah. Yeah, he said, now it's just me and my daughter. Oh, no, I, I got a nice like, little smile. Yeah. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and where is she? Um, <laughs> Can I, I like meet your daughter? Church lady. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the, only, the only other thing that, I, mean, I don't want to say bummed me out or, or just surprised me or that I thought might have been different or interesting was in the comic, they give you a substantial amount of hope and joy by, uh, and again, this is comic book spoiler, right? Uh, by by having the baby get delivered healthily and have Lori survive and be okay, uh, and you get to feel for a little bit like, uh, like uh, you know what, maybe things will turn out. And when in some kind of conflict, 
when she is shotgunned through the chest while holding the baby, exploding Lori and baby everywhere. It's like I remember turning that page and just full on feeling that adrenaline rush yep. and, and just feeling ill. And I guess that's There's, what a lot of I will not spoil this, but there was a recent event in issue 100 that had me feeling that way times 5,000. Oh, I got to get caught up. I got to get caught Ugh. up. Yeah. But, uh, okay. So, so we'll, 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 we'll get to that. But, uh, but I, I just, um, I, I suspect that's what everyone else had happen as well, but, but it, which is why they were all freaking out. But uh, television's a different medium. They're telling a different story. It's just, you know, I had my experience and, and I, there's no way for me to know what everyone else's experience. You know, is. the reason that it was okay for me that they changed it. It's like, I know what they're trying to do is say, we're not trying to reshoot the book. We want it to be different. And I felt like this was the first time where I can really say this is different than the book, but just as powerful uh, and, 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 and just as, as, as valuable to the storyline, even though it's going in a, in a different way. And I'm assuming that I'm going to get that, that upwelling of, of the, what we got in the book with the birth of the baby. We're going to get that in another way at some point. That we're going to get that positive swing because that's what I yes. love about Walking Dead is you everything goes well and you get so excited and you're happy for them and you're relieved that this this tension that they were trying to get away from, like when they first arrive at the prison, is finally resolved and then everything falls apart and everything and it, it's, it's still going on in the post 100 uh, issue where you're like yeah 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 no no now everything's good oh, now everything sucks again and it's, it's, it, he's just a master at that even though you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, and it should be, we should point out also, uh, Bill Meeks in the chat makes a very good point. He says he preferred the show version, actually thought it was much more powerful, especially with Carl's involvement. Or yeah. as Ken Chicago calls it, don't forget the old yeller moment, which that is brutal. And well, and, Carl, and we needed Carl to have that, that problem, that experience in his, in his, his backstory that they avoided with Shane. Uh, yes. And now he's got it times 10. He's got it even worse. So he's yes, gone from being yes. like, well, Carl's kind of underdeveloped to like, oh, no, he might be a little overdeveloped. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess also uh, T-Dog died. <laughs> and and, there, and there, was, <laughs> there was hints like they, they never really said what happened to the chick, right? Well, no, I mean, they, showed the, they showed her head wrap. Right. But I think that was, that was a feint. I, I think that was a uh, – because, you know, you see her going out the door. I, th I, think, I think they're trying to pour, uh, pull a George R. R. Martin there by, by – I don't Almost. know that she's an important enough character to, to George R. R. Martin, or, but you might be right. I, I think she's not dead. This is, just put it this way. I, I, I totally think you could be right, but if they reveal that she's alive, I'm going to be like, oh, well, uh, yeah. why, why, why'd you hide her? That, like, yeah. I don't know. They'll have reasons. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but so far, because reasons. Still, still kicking ass. I'm so still back on board. Third season is amazing. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's it for our Spoiler Zone. Thanks, everybody, for uh, hanging around and getting spoiled. You spoiled brats. <laughs> Just like us. Right on.